Hey, what's up guys, it's Darkroom Duels, and today we're gonna to be doing a Shadow Invoked deck profile. So this deck is really fun to play around with, and probably one of the most competitive ways that you can actually play around with Shadows. It's really, really fun to play with, and, and it's just an overall awesome deck that combines two of the most powerful fusion engines in the entire game into one really powerful, insane deck. So, without further ado guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on there so you can come part of the notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below because we have some awesome words you guys, like getting in the description for every single video, getting a signed card sent in the mail, or even getting to request a deck profile every single month to your patron along with test hands. So, let's get straight on into this guys. So first off, we're going to be playing three copies of Alistair the Invoker. So Alistair the Invoker is a really, really good boss monster in this entire deck that enables you to get to your boss monsters, I may say. But what this card does is during either player's turn, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard and then target one fusion monster you control and it gains a thousand attack until the end phase of the turn. Now you think that doesn't sound that great, but here's the really good effect. It lets you add an invocation if it's normal or flipped face up from your deck to your hand which is really good because invocation is the key card that you're going to be using to go into all of your invoked monsters we then play for the shed all package we're playing two copies of reshed all windy so the shed alls have all shared the same kind of effect that you can only activate either or effect of them per turn you can either activate the flip effect or the card of send to the graveyard effect per turn which is kind of important for your playing your shed alls so wendy's effect is is that if she's flipped face up you get to target a shed all in your graveyard or from your deck to your hand and special summon that monster in face down defense except another copy of herself and if she's sent to the graveyard you get to special summon a shed all monster from your deck in face down defense so pretty much the same effect except when you special summon when she's sent to the graveyard you can only special summon uh face down we then play a single copy of ariel ariel is really good too because she combos really well with shadow incarnation um if she's flip face up you could target a banish at all and special summon that target and face down or face up defense and if she is sent to the graveyard by a card effect you get to target up to three cards in your graveyard and banish them or three cards in either player's graveyard and banish them um which is pretty good then we play two copies of Shadow Beast. Shadow Beast, if this card is flip face up, you get to draw two and then discard one. And if this card is sent to the graveyard, you get to draw a card. We play one copy of Shadow Dragon. Shadow Dragon, if it's flip face up, you get to target a card your opponent controls and uh, bounce it back to their hand. And if this card is sent to the graveyard, then you get to pop a spell or trap on the field. We then play two copies of Shadow Squamata. Squamata has a really neat effect that has the ability to be able to target a monster on the field and destroy it. And if it's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can send one Shadow Squimata from your deck, or you can send another copy of a Shadow from your deck to the graveyard. I have to say that lighting with that looks really nice. We then play one copy of Shadow Hedgehog. Shadow Hedgehog is a really, really awesome card that lets you flip face up and then you get to send a you get to add a shadow spell or trap from your deck to your hand and if it's sent to the graveyard then you get to add a shadow monster from your deck to your hand then a single copy of shadow falco which lets you flip it face up and you get to special summon a shadow from your graveyard in face down defense and if it's sent to the graveyard you get special summon this card from your graveyard in face down defense which is pretty good uh to be able to just recur your shadows we then play a single copy of Perform Age Trick Clown. Trick Clown is a really good light target to summon Construct and summon a lot of different monsters in the deck. If it's sent to the graveyard, you get to special summon it back to your side of the field as a zero attack, zero defense monster, but it does inflict a thousand points of damage to, your, to yourself. Uh, then we play three copies of Cyframe Gear Gamma because you need the three Gammas in this deck to be able to just negate all sorts of cards that your opponent's going to play against you. And it's just an overall really, really good card and it really helps out the deck quite a lot we then play a single copy of cyframe gear driver or cyframe driver cyframe driver is something that you're going to be special summoning off your copy of your gamma all the time in this particular deck and it's just an overall really good card we then play three copies of ash blossom ash blossom is really good too because it is a fire target to use with your copy of the alistair in invocation to summon your copy of purgatrio which is a really really good otk maker in this deck we then play two copies of nibiru as well just to help deal with opponents boards that you just don't want to have to deal with with your monsters especially with this going second kind of ish build where you're trying to summon shadow construct and makaba to kind of clean up the game or purgatrio to kind of clean up the game this card's really really good to be able to just stop your opponent and just board wipe them on their turn and then use your copy of gammas to negate their card effects and summon your light targets that are going to get them banished and thin the deck just a little bit so 
that's it for the uh, monsters. Let's get into the spells. And it's better to go second in Shed All anyways, because your Shed All fusion is going to come in handy, which we're going to get into right now. So we're going to be playing three copies of Shed All Fusion. So Shed All Fusion is a really good card in this deck, because if your opponent controls a monster or a special summon from the extra deck, your entire main deck becomes your fusion materials. You can use anything in your main deck to be able to summon a Shed All Fusion monster. Now it has to require, it has to meet the requirements. For instance, if you're going to summon your construct, you have to send a Shed All monster and a Light monster monster from your deck to the graveyard but it's really good to be able to use any of your monsters in your deck to send to the graveyard which then will trigger your copies of your shadow construct or it will trigger your copies of your shadows that you send from deck to graveyard all their particular effects or trick clown if you send it to the graveyard it'll special summon itself let me play three copies of el shadow fusion el shadow fusion comes in super handy because it's basically a quick play uh polymerization essentially to special summon out a copy of a shadow monster from your deck or from your extra deck we then play three copies of Super Polymerization. Super Polymerization is ridiculously good in this deck because what it does is basically if you have like a copy of Shadow Construct on your side of the field and you don't want to deal with an opponent's card, you can just, and it's a light monster, for instance, or if you want to have, or your opponent has a dark monster and you have a Shadow on your side of the field, for instance, like a Winda, then you can use your opponent's monster and your Shadow, which is either a light monster that they have or a dark monster that they have and go into a copy of one of your copies copies of your uh shed all monsters or your, if you're going into a mirror match you can do it all the crazier because you just go in for the any particular monster you want or if you're playing with starving venom and your opponent has two dark monsters then you can just immediately use this to be able to get rid of two problematic monsters on your opponent's side of the field i always recommend in shed all decks if you have the room play super polymerization we then play three copies of invocation three invocation is the correct number in this deck this card is absolutely insane in this deck it lets you fusion summon using monsters from your um from your hand as fusion material and if you're summoning an invoked monster you can also banish monsters from either player's graveyard to activate this effect as well as fusion material and if uh you can also shuffle this card into the deck and if you do add an alistair that's banished um back to your hand which basically then you can normal summon that alistair and then search the invocation all over again to get you another fusion play we then play three copies of magical meltdown magical meltdown is an insane field spell that basically makes it so that when this card is activated you can add one alistair the invoker from your deck to your hand and the activation of cards and effects that include an effect that fusion summons a fusion monster cannot be negated so make some speed spell for fusion spells which is really good i mean your super polymerization already is but it makes the shed all fusion and shed all fusion and invocation essentially speed spell force which is really really nice in this particular deck and also when it's activated you can add a copy of alistair the invoker from your deck to your hand which essentially then you can normal summon the alistair search invocation and essentially just digs through the deck really fast so that's it for actually excuse me we play a single copy of terraforming as well to search the copy of magical meltdown so that's it for the spells guys let's get into the traps so for the traps we are going to be playing uh, two traps in the deck, which is a single copy of the Shadow Reincarnation uh, and a single copy of Shadow Schism. Schism and Incarnation are the only two traps that you really need in this particular deck. But basically, what they do is the Shadow Schism is basically a miracle fusion if you've ever played Heroes. You get to, during your main phase, you get to fusion summon one Shadow fusion monster from your extract by banishing fusion materials listed on that monster from your field or graveyard, but it can't attack directly. Then you can send to the graveyard one monster your opponent controls with the same attribute as the special summon monster and you can only use its effect once per turn that's a really good effect to be able to just deal with your opponent's plays and not have to go in uh, to be able to pop something on your opponent's side of the field like going in for a window with this card is really really good now the incarnation the only really good effect about incarnation is that if you have it in the graveyard like if you send it to the graveyard off of construct and you have aerial set then you can just use this to flip the aerial face up banish a copy of construct for the requirement and then ariel will revive your copy of construct and put it back face down but the other really kind of cool effect of this it lets you target a shadow in your graveyard and special summon it and face up or face down defense so if you draw it it's not terrible so that's it for the main deck guys let's get into the extra deck so for the extra deck, we're going to be playing two copies of Shadow Construct. Shadow Construct is really, really good in this deck because if she battles a special summon monster, she instantly destroys it. When she special summons, she lets you uh, send a Shadow 
spell or trap from your deck to your uh, from your deck to the graveyard, or a shadow card from your deck to the graveyard. And then also, if she is sent to the graveyard, you get to target a shadow spell or trap and add that target back to your hand, which is a really good effect to be able to add those cards back. She's probably my favorite fusion monster in the entire game. We then play two copies of El Shadow Winda. Winda is really good in the deck too because it makes it so either player can only special summon once per turn. If you do get pushed to go first, you always want to summon Winda uh, right off the bat because it can stop your opponent. You can go Makaba Winda and you're co totally okay because you just have negations and your opponent can only special summon one time unless they deal with the copy of Winda. Um, and also has the ability that if this card, this card cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects either. And if this card is sent to the graveyard, you get to add a shell spell trap from your graveyard back to your hand. We play a single copy of a Pokalone. A Pokalone is really, really good in the deck too, because if this card is special summon, you get to target one face up monster on the field and negate its effects. Or if this card is sent to the graveyard, you get to add a shell spell or trap from your deck or graveyard to your hand and then discard a card. And it also has the ability that can't be destroyed by battle as well. But you can only activate either or of those effects once per turn. Uh, we then play for the Invoked Engine. We're going to be playing a single copy of Invoked Makaba, which is essentially a walking negation. You, if your opponent activates a Spell Trap or Monster, you discard either a Spell Trap or Monster. If they activate a Monster, you discard a Monster. You, if they activate a Spell, you discard a Spell. Trap for Trap. Basically, you kind of just throw a card at their card and it negates it, which is pretty good. Um, but you really only need one in the deck because you, you just don't need more than one Makaba um, to be able to go into. Once you go into one, you're going to just negate everything and it's fine. Uh, one copy of Purgatrio because it helps you OTK your opponent really easily because it can attack all monsters your opponent controls and inflicts piercing damage and it gains 200 attack for each card your opponent controls. If they control five in their back row, it gains a thousand. If they control five monsters on the field, it gains another thousand. So this card can get really big to be able to attack over all the monsters your opponent has. One copy of Starving Venom for the last fusion monster of the entire deck, which is a really, really good card for your super poly target in this particular deck. Then for the uh, Link monsters playing a single copy of Boral Sword, it kind of surprises your opponent and I don't want to play Access Code Talker in here because I want to use my cards to be able to pop cards. I don't want to have to banish to pop. I just want to be able to use my cards to be able to go into my invoked monster. So I play Boral Sword to help me OTK. You play a single copy of Alistair, the Invoker of Madness. This card comes up pretty often. Um, it's really easy to summon, and it has the ability this card's name becomes Alistair, the Invoker, while in the field or in the graveyard. And if a monster is fusion summoned while you control this card, then you get to discard a card. And if you do, you add Invocation from your deck to your hand, which is the big effect of this card. And it just helps out dig through the deck a little bit faster to be able to get through your plays we play a single copy of cross sheet because all of fusion monsters one copy of verta anaconda because anaconda just helps out a lot in this deck because you don't need dragoons on this deck but it does help out to get your copies of like your shadow fusion or your l shadow fusion or your super polymerization live so this card's really good as a one of gravity controller because you can use this by having a copy of your el shadow construct in your monster zone or not monster zone, but extra monster zone link it away for gravity controller and then once you do, your Construct will then trigger to add your copy of a Shadow Spell or Trap from your graveyard back to your hand to get you an additional play. We then play Secure Gardener as well because you can link away a copy of Alamirage when you summon out a copy of Alistair. So you summon Alistair, link into Alamirage, and then link into your copy of Secure Gardener. And then once you do, you have the Secure Gardener on field, which is a light target. You have your copy of Alamirage, which is a fire target. And then you have your Alistair in the graveyard, which is your Alistair target. And then it lets you essentially go for Makaba or Purgatrio with both of these cards, which is ridiculous. So that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. It's a really fun deck to play around with. I highly recommend that if you guys are going to try and play a copy of your um, Shed All deck, you should totally try and play around with this particular build because this is probably the most competitive build. There's a lot of different builds to play around with Shed Alls. I've probably proven that on my channel because you can play with everything from Prediction Princess Shed All, Train Shed Alls, this. You can play Artifact Shed Alls, Pure Shed All. I mean, I could go on for hours with the different builds that I built for Shed Alls. So, anyway, guys this is dark arm duels don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell on there so you can come part of the notification squad and definitely check out the patreon down in the description below and we'll see you guys in the next video see you later guys